Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HB Lovecraft. Doing maybe one or two of these HB Lovecraft reviews each week recently, but I am working my way through the entire collected fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. Today's story is The Outsider, written in 1921, published in April 1926 in Weird Tales. This is apparently a frequently anthologized and very popular H.P. Lovecraft story. This is actually my first time reading it, and it was a delight. Uh, the narrator uh, is telling his own tale here. He's an individual, lonely, um, no friends, in solitude, solitude, no other beings that he knows. Uh, he lives and is trapped in a ruined castle, cut off from the light um, by the thick forest around him. He can read, and like for so many of us, books are his primary companion and education. Uh, but he's never spoken, he doesn't know what his own voice sounds like, he's never even seen himself in a mirror. Um, since he can't escape through the thick forest, uh, he decides that I'm going to try and risk climbing the tallest tower of the castle, which is a sort of partially ruined structure. A very dangerous climb. The stairs don't go all the way, um, but it's his best chance at uh, fulfilling his desire to see the open sky. Uh, he makes the climb, and he exits through a sort of trap door, but what he finds is not a view of the of the over the treetops it's actually he's coming out of the ground and it's sort of a churchyard he's actually been underground all of this time uh the the hatch closes behind him he hopes that he'll be able to get it back open later if he has to to return home but he goes on and he explores for several hours eventually he hears voices and sees lights coming through some windows and he's actually come upon a sort of castle that is much like the place that he's lived in his entire life and there's people, and they sound happy, and there's it's full of light, and they're having a dinner and a party, and they're talking, and he doesn't quite understand what they're saying, but uh, he can feel the vibe of it, and he's drawn to it. <clears throat> so he enters, and immediately at that point, uh, everybody flees, and he doesn't know why they're fleeing. Is there some monster here? Uh, he, he explores a little bit further, comes to sort of an archway, and there he sees it, a creature. Uh, he... He accidentally stumbles and touches the creature, uh, at which point uh, we realize and he realizes that the monster is him. He is uh, sort of an undead, sort of immortal being who has been um, imprisoned for God knows how long. He forgot his own origins, um, but here he is back on the surface in the world of the living, uh, alone, trapped forever. An outsider. Neat little story, guys. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the The idea that the narrator was going to be the monster became clear as soon as he uh, entered the castle, which leaves another page or so afterwards. But despite that sort of early giveaway, uh, the payoff still feels good because there was plenty of tension built uh, and plenty of empathy for the character built over the first couple of pages. I'm reminded um, of the mummy somewhat, um, just of the idea of somebody being locked away and then entering into a different world. Uh, but more so, I'm reminded of Frankenstein's monster, sort of the tragic side of that story, which never really comes across in, um, or say not never, but rarely comes across in most of the movie adaptations of that story. Uh, beyond the fictional element, I love that it's sort of this um, relatable uh, story of a of a person who uh, is very um, often in solitude and they learn about the world and enjoy the world through books and books are where they have their friends and where they have their adventures and their knowledge and then uh, that one time when they finally put themselves out there and um, engage with the world, the world shuns them. And I think that is a very relatable tale. I hesitate to say it, but it may be at least partially, um, I wanna say autobiographical to H.P. Lovecraft himself. I know he had self-esteem issues and depression issues and probably felt rejected by his peers because of his work being so bizarre compared to many others who were writing at that time. And then, of course, um, in those days when he was writing, um, 
you know, there was an influx of immigration, and I think he often probably felt like an alien in his own um, hometown, which has led people to consider him a racist, but I think it's, um, I think you have to look at it two ways, which is, yes, there's the racism act, um, aspect of it, but I think it's also just fear, and everybody has fears, it's just, we um, respond to them in different, different ways, but Lovecraft himself was certainly, um, I would say, felt like an outsider through much of his short life. So that, are, that is my um, quick analysis of The Outsider, written 1921, published April 1926 in Weird Tales. As I was saying up front, great little um, well-written tale, possibly one of his best, certainly one of his more popular and most anthologized stories. Uh, if you've not subscribed to this channel yet, please be sure to do that. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and then tune in again uh, in several days and we'll do another one of these until we're done with the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. So far I've reviewed, I wanna say, uh, between 30 and 40 of his stories, which leaves another 20 or 30 so to go. Um, but yeah guys, it's been um, fun so far exploring H.P. Lovecraft and I look forward to continuing to explore it here on Let's Talk with you. So in text, until next time, keep it creepy.